In this lecture, we are going to be talking about one of the most important concepts you learned in all of Algebra 1, and it is a foundation for this entire chapter, and that is graphing linear equations. Okay, so first of all, an equation means we do have an equal sign. Linear means that it is a going to form a straight line, um, a continuous slope, and when we're graphing linear equations, there are two different ways that you probably have learned before. The first method, which we call slope-intercept form, and this is the method that you are taught most often in Algebra 1. So slope-intercept form deals with the form of y equals mx plus b. So sometimes this is a great method to use when our y is already isolated. Other times, if y is not isolated, we might need to do a little bit of work first. And the two important things for us to know in slope-intercept form is that m is equal to our slope, and b represents our y-intercept, hence slope-intercept form. Our second form, some of you guys may have learned and some of you did not, but this is called standard form. Okay, that's when we have x and y on the same side, and then it's equal to what we call c, which represents a constant. In order to find our slope in standard form, we are going to go ahead and do the opposite of a over b. So I'm going to do a over b, and then if that ratio is positive, I would put a negative. If I do a over b and that ratio is negative, then I would make this a positive. In order to find our y-intercept, it is c over b, okay, which is the constant divided by the y-coefficient. Okay, now, this may look more complicated, however, sometimes it definitely saves us time if the equation is in this form. Now, just so you guys know, I will never make you use one way over the other. I think it's important that we know both ways so that we can choose correctly when we think the easiest way would be. Before we get into our problems, the other thing I want to talk about are finding intercepts. And I want to start by talking about what intercepts actually are. In order to do this, I think it's easiest if we have an equation. Okay, so the first thing we're going to find is the x-intercept, and we are going to do this by setting y equal to 0. So I get 2x equals 6, so x is equal to 3. What this actually gives me is an ordered pair of 3, 0. Now to find the y-intercept, we're going to set x equal to 0, so I would do 2 times 0 minus 3y equals 6, so I have negative 3y equals 6, so y is negative 2, which gives me an ordered pair of 0, negative 2. Now we can go ahead and draw and connect those two points with a straight line. Okay, and this is not necessarily the easiest way of graphing um, we definitely can use our shortcuts that we previously talked about. But it is important to understand that intercepts are on the x-axis and the y-axis, and it's when one of our variables is set equal to 0. Okay, so let's get into our problems. Number 1, y equals 1 half x plus 1. Now, to me, this looks exactly like slope-intercept form, so I'm going to go ahead and use that. In this form, we can see that m is one-half, that's the coefficient of x, and we can see that b is whatever our constant is, so in this case b is equal to 1. On every single problem you guys are doing tonight, um, I would definitely expect to see the slope and the y-intercept written down on the problem, okay, because that is one really good way for me to see that you are understanding um, like the concepts that we're learning on quizzes and tests. If you didn't have this, I would mark you off. Now when we're actually graphing, we always begin with b. So our b value, if we wanted to think of it as an ordered pair, is 0, 1. So I'm going to go to 0, 1 and put a point. 
And now a slope of one half is telling me to go up one and to the right two. So I'm going to rise one, go to the right two. I could have also gone to the down one and to the left two. Okay, from here I could go up. I'm going to go ahead and draw my line. So there we go, there would be my line. Notice the arrows show that it is continuing forever in both directions. And this line, just so you know, the reason why we graph lines is this is the best representation of all the solutions of our equation y equals one half x plus one. Okay, so we're looking at problem number two here. And once again, this looks to me like it fits y equals mx plus b form. So I'm going to look and see, okay, what is the coefficient of m? I'm sorry, what is m, which is the coefficient of x? And that is what our slope is going to be. And our y-intercept, we know, is the constant. Like, remember, a constant is a number without a variable attached. And in this case, I don't have anything, so I'm going to say the y-intercept is 0. So I'm going to start by plotting the y-intercept, which is 0, 0. And then a slope of negative 2 means I need to go down 2 and to the right 1. Or I could have gone up 2 and to the left 1. And then I'm going to go ahead and draw my line. Now looking at number 3, 5x minus 2y equals 20, this is the first time we see one that looks like it, it fits standard form. Now keep in mind, if you just absolutely love slope-intercept form, you could go ahead and take this equation and isolate y by subtracting 5x, dividing everything by negative 2, and you could do it exactly like 1 and 2 then once we have it in the correct form. I, however, prefer to save time, so I'm going to use standard form. So ax plus by, I can see my a value is 5. Okay, and my b value here, I'm going to say it is negative 2. So our slope, we said, is the opposite of a over b. So if a over b should have been 5 over negative 2, what I would do is change that into a positive. So our slope here is 5 over 2. Our y-intercept is c over b. So I have 20 over negative 2, which is negative 10. So the key thing with using standard form is knowing the memorization on how to find the slope in the y-intercept, which I wrote out on top here again. So the slope is the opposite of a over b. The y-intercept is c over b. So the way that once we get to this point, it's identical to 1 and 2, so we're going to go ahead and graph it. So this time, our y-intercept is negative 10, so that's a ordered pair of 0, negative 10. Our slope is up 5 to the right 2, and I'm going to continue that. And then I'm going to connect these points with a straight line. There we go. And we would be done. Number 4 is another example of standard form. AX plus BY is equal to C. I know that our slope is equal to the opposite of A over B. I'm looking at this. Our A value looks like it's 3. Our B value is negative 2. So 3 over negative 2, if I'm doing the opposite of that, it would be 3 halves. My Y-intercept is C over B. So I'm going to do... Actually, I'll write out C over B here for us. There we go. So C over B, which is 6 over negative 2 or negative 3. So now I'm going to go ahead and graph this particular line. Okay, so this is a Y value of negative 3, so 0, negative 3. I'm going to slope of 3 over 2 tells me to go up 3 and to the right 2, and I'm going to go ahead and connect those and draw my arrows on both sides, and we're done with the problem. 
If you need more help on this and want to see one more example, keep watching. Otherwise, have fun doing your walkthrough. Okay, so I wanted to go through one final problem that looks like it is in the form of standard form. So let's start by finding our slope, which we know is the opposite of A over B. A this time is 8 and B is 6 and it's positive. So that means when I find our slope, it's going to be negative because that's the opposite of 8 over 6. And we learned we always need to reduce our slopes. So that's going to become negative 4 over 3. Our y-intercept is c over b, which is 24 over 6, or 4, which we know is an ordered pair of 0, 4. So if I'm graphing this, I'm going to go to 0, 4, and then I'm going to go down 4 and to the right 3. And I'm connecting my points. Now, to bring this back to what we learned last lecture, since I have a negative slope, I know that from left to right, my graph should be falling. And we can definitely see in this case that it is. So that is a great way to double check if you're doing things correctly.